essentially what I'm here to talk to you about is an example of quality process in Washington State where um, we kind of had a regulatory and producer kind of interface that turned out to amazingly be a positive experience for dealing with air quality issues. Uh, I'm going to kind of first go over uh, what, where Yakima is and what happened, what was the process that kind of spurred this on, and then talk about the products and what came out of this from a positive perspective um, of what we developed. Uh, so first of all, so here's Washington State, and what I've circled is Yakima. It's kind of down here. This is the drier half of our state, maybe about 12 inches of rain on average. A lot of the dairy operations here have kind of come in in the last handful of years. Historically, there was some there. There's a lot of agriculture in general. But about over the last, um, from like 2007 to 2010, they had a 20% increase in dairies. And these are an average size of 1,300 cows. Some, we've got one operation over there that's got 10,000 cows. So they're very larger style operations, and uh, most of them are dry lot uh, style, not very many freestyle operations. About 70 dairies, but about 90,000 cows, so quite a bit in a small area. And what happened here is that, oddly enough, unlike most areas, we had these dairy operations and agriculture come into a set community that wasn't used to that. Usually we are the other way around with kind of an ag-urban encroachment kind of deal. And the community kind of bucked up against us a little bit. Suddenly there were dust issues and odor and there was more manure application on fields. And at the same time, there was an increased awareness in air quality impacts and non-attainment in that area. There was a specific um, journal article that came out because uh, kind of the local community was concerned about air quality and what are we breathing, what are these problems. And so they raised that. They went to the Yakima Regional Clean Air Agency meetings and said, hey, there's a problem here. What's going on? And so the Yakima Regional Clean Air Agency had to address this. It's their, that's their duty as a state agency to address air quality concerns from the community. And so what they did was to develop a policy to address air quality management for dairy operations specifically. That was a the target. There's other agriculture in that area but this focused on dairies. And they wanted to address a whole suite of pollutants. Let's look at ammonia, nitrous oxide, hydrogen sulfide, VOCs, odors, PM, uh, methane, and uh, nitrous oxides. So a lot. And through this uh, policy process, they say, OK, everyone needs to have an air quality management plan. And the policy will outline what BMPs go in there. We'll let this be voluntary, but there needs to be some selection. And this can't be monitored, as a lot of us know, a regional monitoring of individual BMPs in, installed on a farm is kind of difficult. So we'll assume results. And while the framework was pretty good, they just kind of put it out there without a lot of cons consulting of other uh, dairy industry or other folks. And the dairy industry bucked up against that a little bit and said, wait, wait a second here. You're just going to tell us what to do. and We've had no input. How about we proactively step up and say we would like to collaborate and cooperate in this process we will enter as a voluntary agency or a voluntary industry and support this process if you back off and put this through more of a research-based process. So what happened is that got approved that we had one year to conduct a pilot process to put this policy through to see will it actually work. At the same time, it gave time for scientists to develop tools on how to actually do this. How are we, what are the good tools? Let's develop guidance documents, et cetera. So it's a 12-month project aiming at this. Additionally, by the way, air quality management plans, no one's ever written one of those in the, in the US for actually kind of a similar style to a nutrient management style plan. So there's no real template. We were kind of like, well, how does this go? Where does this go? So there was a lot of questions hanging out there. So this was a great way to kind of go through um, this process. We had 12 dairies volunteer straight off. That was approximately 67% of the cows. So it, it was quite a bit of um, um, not the 70 dairies. And inspections were conducted twice a year, kind of the wet and drier seasons, uh, so that there could be some uniformity. And the important part here is that the Clean Air Agency contracted with the university and outside experts on development of their guidance and their tools to help support good science in that aspect. And so I'm going to kind of go over what came out of that pilot project, what tools were developed. Uh, what pollutants we decided to address, the inspection protocol that was successful, the BMP score sheet selection guide, and a tiered selection matrix that came out of that. 
And then what are the next steps for that's going to happen with this process? So the first thing was what pollutants should be addressed. And as was mentioned earlier in their policy, they wanted to do the whole suite. A little bit daunting, but there is some validity there. So if you think about it, for instance, if we look at every area on farm from our barns to feed management to manure application to harvesting, et cetera, manure storage, the whole thing, it definitely works as a system. And if you look at something in particular like ammonia, let's say we spent all our time focusing on ammonia reduction from barns. Well, like a balloon, if you squeeze one end, yeah, you decrease it here, but you've exponentially increased it on the other side. So if you don't follow something like that through the whole system, all the efforts you make in one area are completely devalidated in another area. So that made sense. Something like, a, like methane, for instance, that might be far more of a point source. But the point was, let's work in a systems approach and let's look at all these things holistically in one tool and one management style. So we decided on that. The next was to develop an inspection protocol. And, um, and so uh, Pius and Dega, who's here as well, and I worked with uh, the clean air agency to go out and to train their staff. I went on on every single inspection with them. And I spent a lot of time, as most of us have, going to school and learning about what BMPs are, how air quality works. And I had to try to impart that information to a few folks in a very short time, and uh, the best I could. So that part was just helping them identify what are you seeing when you go out, and then developing a tool that helped them kind of have the back work of the scientific evaluation with that, which I'll show you. Having a seasonal evaluation, very important. Walking the entire operation, as we mentioned, to kind of have that systems approach and talk with the producer, sit down and ask them a lot. They can have their feed management guy come, their manure guy, whoever it may be, get answers from that whole group. And kind of that survey approach James was talking about, but was mentioned, if you sit down and you kind of do that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And not only to look at the BMPs that we have on our list for evaluation, but also look at unique things they're doing. More often, I've gone out to a place and went, that's a really good idea, you know? And then you take that, and it's practical, and it makes sense, and it also has good reduction uh, possibilities with it. So being creative and flexible in that respect. And then for every BMP that you see giving it a score and how well they're managing it, and entering it into something we call a score sheet uh, that Pius and I created, along with Hassan Tahat at the Regional Clean Air Agency. And this is essentially, and I'll show it to you, it's Excel-based. It's basically an evaluation tool where you can look at every BMP that we've got that has been shown in the literature. So what we did is we completely mined the literature. What are all the BMPs related to air quality are out there? We threw away all the ones that are completely impractical due to cost or implementation. Um, and then we took the ones that were uh, likely to be in solid farm. We broke those into different categories. Like I mentioned, kind of feed management, barns, whether that's a uh, free stall, um, barn or dry lot uh, style housing, uh, waste management, et cetera. And then gave each one of those BMPs a weighted value for all of the different pollutants that it could possibly affect. And that was based on the scientific data that was found in literature. So while this is kind of a subjective observational assessment, it does have some kind of a scientific objective basis behind it. And it gives in uh, areas in need of management this is not a regulatory value, not a regulatory tool that we developed in whatsoever. It's just an assessment tool. And kind of what that looks like, um, it's not extraordinarily clear, but it'll give you an idea, is first of all, we've got all of the pollutants in this zone um, up here, and then the scores that those correlate to. So here you've got um, ammonia, nitrous oxide, et cetera, and then the BMP here, and then if it has a score, uh, if it's a zero, that means it doesn't affect that pollutant. If it has a score from one to five, one being uh, not very helpful at all, five being a great, and we actually had some that were negative since we do have trade-offs on some of these, um, that gave kind of the weighting score. And then um, the BMPs were listed, and then here in these gray boxes is where the evaluator would enter a score when they went out from zero, not implementing at all, to five, doing a very good job implementing that, and everything in between. Once they enter those for each of the categories, so this would be nutrition, feed management, et cetera, it would give you a weighted subtotal for each of those, uh, for each section. And then at the very end, 
It would also um, produce an overall score by looking at a weighted total for each one of those pollutants. And the score would be given to that producer. To, and that's what you know the producer kind of relation. They're like, how am I doing? How am I doing? And what's my score? That's all they really care about. So you say you're a B student. You're a C student. We probably have room for improvement, whatever it may be. And how this also works is in the end, you can look, OK, where are we getting our lowest scores, our lowest values? Let's say it's um, you know, here in particulate matter. Well, in this case, where's that going? So we can start going right back up that list and see in those, each of those individual areas, where's that low score? And we can start to say, OK, you have know, got some issues in your waste management area. And so then we would go look at that. Here's hydrogen sulfide, for instance. We got some issues in your housing. We got a very low score for hydrogen sulfide. Where is that coming from? And we can look at those BMPs. Um, sitting a water trough within your pen, knock down and remove fence line manure. Here's some BMPs that you can increase that, that value, up your score, and do a little bit better. So it's a way to kind of evaluate as well as share with producers what are the things they can do to improve their um, air quality BMP implementation. And to go along with that, we developed a BMP selection guide for all of those BMPs that were in that sheet as, um, throughout each of these areas within a management strategy. And it explains to a producer or to a planner, whoever it may be, what that BMP means. So what's the background? And then how do you manage that effectively to implement that onto your farm? And what different pollutants are being affected with that BMP? Uh, so it really gave people something to go back to to say, well, what is you know, whatever, knock down fence line manure. What exactly do you mean by that? How's that going to affect things? What, how do I do that correctly? Um, so even though it sounds obvious, it helps to have this background with all kind of the scientific uh, piecings that go with that. And then additionally, so once we've identified, OK, you've got these are your weak spots on your farm that we need to improve with our air quality management BMPs. We developed a selection matrix that kind of goes from different levels of economic, technical, and time input, such that they can start selecting, where do I need to be? And it's kind of a feedback response. So for instance, if they install a tier one BMP, that means low economical input, easy to uh, install, they'll probably get some benefit from it. And if our objectives are met, then you're done. If not, let's move to a tier two and go back through this process. Not only does this accommodate a good level of management for folks and gives them credit for that, but it also has some flexibility in which BMPs are going to work for every operation because there is no like solid, you know, here's your what you're going to do for every operation. Everyone has a unique kind of recipe for what's going to work for their management style and for what they already have on farm. And this is kind of what that would look like, for instance. So for nutrition, we know what expected pollutants are there. A tier one BMP may be uh, properly managed uh, level of dietary crude protein in the diet for nitrogen reduction and ammonia reduction. If that's not working, maybe then we move to better group feeding so that we're managing their diets um, far more incrementally. If that's not working, maybe we um, go to add it, feed additives, et cetera. So it kind of moves up the line of uh, challenges or implementation of that cost uh, and those types of things. So we've got that set for every single area of their farm. And then, of course, um, we looked at, we heard this from James earlier, some of the barriers to adoption that we found. So yeah, we've got all these tiered BMPs, and they're doing things and all these. But there's a lot of things you have to consider when you're selecting BMPs for an operation, suggesting BMPs, what they're going to do. And of course, number one is availability. Some of these that we've discussed, and for instance, um, when I was uh, actually out here at CSU um, doing some of my postdoc work, I looked at different, you know, actually installing some of the BMPs that work really well in the literature and actually installing those in the real world. And one of them a lot of people have heard about is like alum application to uh, basically applying an acidifier to surfaces to bind ammonia so it doesn't volatilize. If you actually try to install that on a feedlot, it's extremely expensive and lasts about two days. So you know, once you get animals walking on it, moving it around, or it rains, or whatever it may be. So some of those things, you're like, well, maybe that's not feasible or cost effective. Um, and the availability is kind of down. So there are some things that in literature work really well, but they don't really work well in the real world. So we definitely had to identify those and highlight those things. 
And for a producer, sometimes it's just a lack of technical knowledge about, well, I don't know what that is. And, and my, you know, the guy who I work with doesn't know what that is, my consultant, et cetera. So it's really distributing how, what are these things? And that was that BMP guidance document was to help people understand what are these BMPs and how to properly utilize them. Some of the limitations with implementing these, whether that be your management or your on-farm. So we may say, wow, this BMP is the best, but you don't really have the setup to do it. You don't have the machinery to do it. You're using a different application equipment. So now we can't do that one. Let's move to the next. So it's really adjusting as you go along to get the best things. And then, of course, trade-offs with other resources. And I was having a conversation with someone about this last night. And we were arguing about nitrogen application. He said, yeah, put it out there in the summer so it all blows off so we don't have to worry about water quality. I said, no, 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 put it all in the winter so it all stays in the ground. We don't have it blowing off. And so there is a trade-off we have to consider, not only with, let's say, ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, which have a lot of converse reactions with some of these BMPs, but also with water quality. Um, or other soil quality, et cetera. So really focusing and understanding that. Some other things that come in for barriers for adoption are regulations. What's happening in your state? A lot of farmers are just dig their heels in and say, if you tell me to do it, I ain't going to do it. So it's really working with them in a way that they're open and receptive to what you're giving to them, finding ways that by implementing some of these things, they will have a positive economic feedback into their operation. They'll interact better with their community whatever it may be, kind of finding common ground for what we're asking them to do. Very important. And so at the completion of the pilot project, we developed all these things. We utilized them on farm. We got a lot of great response back from producers. We had a workshop actually um, near the end of this. And we had producers who participated, ones who didn't come in. And at the end, the ones who didn't said, well, that doesn't sound so bad. All right, I guess I can do that. You know, so. It really, we did create a positive environment for having this um, good process happen. And in the end, the, um, the Yakima Regional Clean Air Agency recommended to their board to adopt the policy uh, at the end of last, or the beginning of last year, so February 2012, and it was not regulatory. So it was a policy that said, this is what we would like you to do. We're not requiring it to you to do it at this time, but it's a good idea for you to voluntarily kind of move into this. It's possible this will become regulatory at some point, but it's not quite yet. So in just this March, um, they are moving into phase two of the process and starting to enroll more dairies in the process. I think they're trying to get a little bit more push to get people enrolled in that. There's some voluntary response, but we've had some other things in our state happen with other regulatory agencies that have kind of spooked everybody once again. So you know, we kind of have to go back out and smooth it all out and get them all comfortable and get them back in the process here. But, um, so we'll see what the future brings. But the amazing part about this process was that it was very unique and that the dairy industry was a very proactive and very cooperative right off the bat. Instead of usually it's kind of, you know, they get hit by the bus and then they kind of cooperate. And this time they said, no, we're going to drive the bus. We're not going to get hit by it. And they really did. And of course, this made other agencies think that they were in on the whole thing or something. But the point was that they put up money and they put up resources and they got scientists involved and said, please make this a good process. And you know, we're, we're willing to participate every step of the way. And the use of science and air quality experts by the Clean Air Agency, instead of just going through their own in-house regulatory process, which a lot of agencies do, that produces a so-so document or process at the end, they really were able to create something robust and useful. Um, and kind of have every layer associated and worked on in there. They developed these tools with planners and producers in mind. In fact, the air quality tool I um, just showed you is under consideration by our state NRCS as an air quality assessment tool to be used for larger planning in general. So what we developed is very accessible and transferable to other areas, which is great. It's a flexible and adaptive process and products, very important because this is a very dynamic industry, and so you want to accommodate that. And the creation of air quality management plans for dairy operations is new, and it's setting a precedence for what we're doing. So we're hoping that by creating, taking the time up front to create a very user-friendly and planner-friendly product, but is also robust and scientific enough to support good air quality management, is going to kind of play out and be usable by other states and other areas as well. <clears throat> 